Hello, my friends and channel subscribers. Greg here from Brisbane, Australia, with another uncut, unedited, noble video. Recently, I posted a video about how to make cherry ice cream, homemade cherry ice cream in Aldi machine. The video was very popular and I had a couple of comments, and today's video is a result of those comments. So some of the comments asked me to make more flavors of the ice cream, and some comments say, hey, slow down and tell us why you're using your ingredients the way you use it and why it's so important and what makes your ice cream healthy. So today's video will address two of those kind of uh, broad but um, important questions. How do you make tasty homemade ice cream and how to make it healthy? So first of all, I just would like to point out what is healthy. Healthy is actually referring not to food, but to people. So what do I mean? Food could be nutritious or not nutritious. Healthy is your lifestyle and how you live. So if you buy ice cream at the shop and you buy it for the flavor, it's so great, I'm not against it. But in my lifestyle, the lifestyle of my kid that I'm trying to teach him nutrition, uh, it is important to use ingredients that you understand what you put into food and how it fits into your lifestyle. So in today's video, we're using a couple of ingredients. It will be sugar replacement or uh, sugar alcohol. I know it sounds terrible, but it's nothing to do with alcohol or such. So it's erythritol. So people asking me why I'm not using monk fruit and I'm not using stevia. All right, I'm more than happy to use them. And if you think you are using them, you could be a little bit surprised. So if you buy your monk fruit or erythritol in the supermarket, uh, please read the label. You will see it's only 1% or 2% monk fruit or stevia. The rest of it will be erythritol. So you're paying premium for ingredient that is in front of you that I buy probably two times or probably three times cheaper. Uh, and the link will be down in the description of this video. So the ingredient 100% natural erythritol. So what's happening when it uh, goes inside uh, your body, it doesn't get absorbed. So it's all great with the caution side. So what does it mean does it get absorbed? If you eat too much of it, it may upset your stomach. And it's not because it's bad, because your stomach cannot digest it. So Eating it in an ice cream, that's fine, and sugar replacement is fine, but if you make one liter of ice cream and you eat it all, you may get upset stomach, not because of the ice cream itself, because of too much of sugar replacement. However, it has zero calories, it does not get absorbed, and as such, it's zero calories and not part of nutrition. So this why I'm using it, it is sweet, but it's not part of what people call macros. There's no nutrition in it, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just neutral. So that's your sweetener, and that's good enough to have nice sweet ice cream, and my boy even doesn't know that I don't put ice cream there. So second ingredient is a thickener. Why be thickener? To have that creamy, nice ice cream. So if your ice cream more icy, you need to put more thickener than milk, if your ice cream is too thick, you need to put more milk and less thickener. But in sense of uh, how I make ice cream, I make half and half. So 300 ml of thickener, 300 ml of milk, and then flavors of the ice cream. Let's refer to the flavors. I don't use any what they call uh, artificial or natural flavors. All of that not really good for you, but it's up to you decide what's good for you. I use everything that I actually can see what it is. So what I'm using today, I'm using today fresh strawberries. I will cut them uh, in pieces. Uh, I will use sweetener, milk, thickener, and sometimes I add a little bit of vanilla extract. It just concentrated vanilla, and that's all. So if you think about ice cream and people say, oh, how can you eat ice cream every day? Well, if you know what it is, like say, if you drink milk every day or eating strawberries every day, think of all of these ingredients in one place, nicely stirred and frozen, and that's your ice cream. So if you think ice cream is a junk food, you can rethink it again. 
So the first item I would like to address, what flavors do I use and where are I getting them? This is from Amazon and actually I shop most of my uh, ingredients in Amazon because I've got Prime membership, it's delivered for free and it costs much, um, it's cheaper, way cheaper to buy on Amazon than in the supermarket. So again, strawberries, sweetener, uh, thickener and milk. That is all. There's no anything else artificial in my ice cream. So what I'll do and explain how I make ice cream, what's important to make good ice cream. So I use a Nutribullet uh, and not using really for shakes, but currently I used to actually mix all ingredients. When I say all, it's all but strawberries. Why? Because if you mix strawberries as a mushroom in a, in a Nutribullet, you get strawberry flavor. I want the strawberry chunks, I want whole fruit, so we don't uh, lose anything in the process. So for example, when you make smoothie out of strawberries, you may lose a lot of oxidants uh, through oxidation process. If you just cut those strawberries, you preserve the whole fruit and you then freeze it and it's as a fresh, all right? So this is why I'm not mixing it in a Nutribullet. But what I do mix, uh, you need to mix really well milk and thickener before putting in the ice cream machine. So what I'll do, I'll put erythritol, milk and thickener in a, in a jar. I will mix it, pour it inside the ice cream machine and then cut my strawberries and then add it all together. So what I'll do right now, because mixing it all will make a lot of noise, I'll pause this video. I will make that shake and I will show you how it's all um, done in, in, a, in an ice cream machine. I'll be back in a second. Yes, I promised to come back when it's all mixed, but I just realized someone asked me how much of each ingredient I put in. So quickly back with what I'm going to put in. So at the moment, I put erythritol in and to be honest um, everyone has different taste buds to me that is enough and approximately i think it's um, maybe 50 maybe maybe 100 grams of erythritol to have that sweet taste if you need more please put more and i've got a couple of uh, uh, solid uh, pieces here but it's not much if you put in a powder it probably won't be that much so i think you need if you put erythritol you need to experiment what's your taste to make a, a beautiful tasty ice cream. So that's how much erythritol I put in. Now, um, remember I say I put half and half thickener and milk, and so because I like consistency when it's half and half. If you would like thicker, put more thickener. If you would like it more watery or milky, please put more milk. But what I do, I've got the 600 ml of thickener and I put exactly half jar. And the reason is that because half jar is 300 grams, or milliliters and it will be 300 milliliters of milk. It will be together 600 milliliters and approximately uh, 100 grams of erythritol. Uh, it will be 700 grams altogether. And the capacity of the ice cream maker is 700 um, uh, grams or one liter. So it's exactly enough uh, to make one full portion of ice cream. And it's also easy. I can see half of the jar to put in. I don't need to measure anything. I can clearly see it's a half jar. Put in and then add milk. And again, I don't really measure. I can see approximately how it fills up. So it's that much. And I will mix it all together in a mixer. And then I put my strawberries in a mixed environment already in ice cream. And again, I don't put strawberries in the mixer, not to break down fruit because it will oxidize more and you lose all the antioxidant effect. Let's go mush it up and I'll show you how I prep my ice cream maker. And I just finished mixing it all up. So I've got a mix of erythritol, milk and thickener. It's all mixed uh, in a Nutribullet. It's enough of uh, one round. I think it's uh, 30 to 45 seconds. So I open it up, kind of drain a little bit from the blades 
And I've got here an ice cream maker. That's the bucket that you end up with and put all the ingredients inside that bucket. All right, so I pour everything I've got here inside there. When it's all done, I'll just add all the strawberries that I cut in. And the reason, again, I don't put it in the blender because I don't want to lose uh, uh, oxidative antioxidants uh, in, in, in the strawberries because when you cut them, they get oxidized. That's why I don't like smoothies. So I put it all in and it's approximately 90% full right there. Now, this is most important bit and many people complain about uh, Aldi ice cream maker. So it has pins on the side and also has arrow in the cover. What is really important it's almost invisible. There's another error on the lid here. It's really important to align them up and then lock. If you don't do this, it will beep and never freeze your ice cream, only because those two contacts should touch contacts on the, on the machine and report how uh, much resistance the blade has, because the resistance of the blade uh, dictates how ready ice cream is. And if there's no report back or feedback, it won't go ahead. So people, many people say on the internet, I've got Aldi machine and it's beeping, doing nothing. It's only because I believe your arrow is not aligned. So that's another tip. So what we'll do, we align the arrows, we lock it in, press button, which starts machine, ask me what I would like to do. And where's the play button? Ice cream is already flushing. So what I'll do, I'll press the button, and make sure that blade it's actually start mixing everything up and leave it until it's ready. How do I know ice cream is ready? The resistance of the blade and the thickness of the ice cream will report back to machine and machine will stop and beep when ice cream is ready. I hope this video was helpful and I addressed all the questions from a previous video. Thank you so much for watching. Greg from Brisbane, Australia. Until next time.